So today we're going to look at 2, 2a, percent of a number, finding a percent increase or decrease, finding the amount of percent, and finally looking at GST. Hopefully we'll get through them all. If we don't, we'll take the rest of them later. So before we do that, I wanted to remind you a little bit of some things about percent. The symbol percent means a couple of different things you can think of it. You can think of it as out of 100, right? You can think of it as divide by 100. Either way, either way you want to think about that. One's mathematics, one's just the English version of it. But what it does is it allows you to compare numbers very easily. If you take it out of 100, it doesn't matter if you have 7,000 people or 10 people, you can always get a specific comparison amount. So we use percents quite a lot. And <clears throat> so you need to know what a percent means to be able to make it work and why you're doing percents. Another with, with way of thinking of percents is when you're finding a percent, it's always the part divided by the whole. So if I wanted to find out what percentage, for example, you guys were of the whole school, I would just take however many students there are in this class, divided by the total number of students, and that would tell me what percentage of the students are in this class, right? It's always part over whole. So if you keep that in mind, when you're trying to find a percent, it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so we're gonna look at today, finding percents of numbers, finding percents of increase, et cetera. So you're, and the important part of this is make sure that you know what it is you're looking for because the mathematics behind it is quite easy in all of them, okay? So let's start at the beginning. To find a percent of a number. Now we're still working in that consumer part, so we're gonna be working with dollar amounts here. And when they do that, they usually don't say of, they usually say on, 30% on $500. So, <clears throat> but, it mean, but it means the same thing. The first thing you're gonna do is change the percent to a decimal. Now, if you've got your calculator on you, you don't even have to do this. Your calculator will do that for you. You could just put in the number of percent and then hit the percent key and it will change it for you. But you're not always gonna have the calculator and, this is, and there's no math involved in doing this, so it's important to know. If you take a percent to a decimal, you're simply gonna move the decimal two places left. And left because a percent means divide, so that means you're gonna get, it's gonna get smaller. So that means the decimal is gonna to move to the left. So let's just quickly look at an example of that. So say, for example, you have 87%, and we want to change that to a decimal. Where's the decimal in 87 right now? Across the 7. At the end of the 7? Good. And it's going to move two places to the what? Left. To the left. So that's going to be 0 0.87. Now, again, if you use your calculator, you can just multiply with the percent. It makes no difference. But if you don't have the calculator, you could, and your calculator is going to do this calculation for you. Mm -hmm. So if it's 100, if it's 100, 101%, it mm -hmm. would just be 1.015. Exactly. So if you have 107%, for example, it's just going to move those two places so you'll have more than one. Good question, because you're going to be working with those when we do increases. All right. Now, once it's changed to a decimal, either by you or by the calculator, it makes no difference to me, then you're simply going to multiply that decimal times your original number. So for example, if we were taking 35% of $70, 35% would become 0 0.35 times, anytime you see the word of or on, you're thinking of it's going to be multiply, times our $70. And would someone be so kind just to do that multiplication for me, please? Got an answer for me? Anyone? Sure. 20. 
So 35% of $70 is $24.50. Okay? So just a matter of taking the percent, and again, your calculator can do that for you. You can enter it as a percent because you'll always have your calculators. And again, that's when you're finding a percent of a number. So that's the first section that we're going to be working with. So let's just go to some examples of that, a couple of examples of that, and then we'll come back to the notes for the rest. Now again, remember, I'm going to do an example, then we're going to do an example. So say I want, oops, sorry, that's not it. Okay. Now, the key here is the amount of the following percentages. So even though it says increase or decrease, don't worry about that. All I want to do is find the amount of the percent. Okay, so pay attention to, the, to, the, to what they're saying. In a moment, this is going to look very similar. The problem will be this very similar, but you're looking for something different. So the amount of the following percents. So if I want to do that, it's just simply a 10% increase on $26,000. So 10% on 26000 I'm just going to switch to notebook paper so we can see it better. So all I need to do, since I'm just looking for a percent, a percent of a number, simply take 10% times 26,000. And if you know anything about that, it's going to be 0 0.1. If you change it to a decimal, times 26,000, which is simply going to move it one decimal place and give you 2,600. Yes? Then the question is if it asks what the new price would be. Exactly, and that's going to be the next set. Yeah, and so then we're going to be. Yeah. Okay? All right, so now you're going to do one. So just, just so you can practice pushing these into your calculator. So just look at, here we go. Just do C. 12.5% increase on $1,600. Our next topic that we want to talk about is to, f to find a new amount when you do an increase or decrease. Now it's the same idea, the same basic formula for both, except with increase, what operation do you think you're probably going to work with? You're adding it, good, plus. And with a decrease, you would be subtracting. And it's much easier to think of increasing or decreasing the percentages than finding the percent of a number instead of finding the percent and then subtracting it away from the numbers. Trust me, it's just a lot easier. Because if you think about it, the original amount is one whole thing. And what is the whole original amount as a percent? 100%. Yeah, good. Thanks. All right. And if you increase that by 20%, then you're going to pay the original 100% plus another 20%. So in other words, 120%. So that's, that addition is, or subtraction is much easier than saying $35.75 minus $2.25, right? So you're just, it's just much easier to add or subtract the percentages first and then just simply find a percent of the number and that'll give you your answer, okay? So to find the amount of increase or decrease, you simply, first, you're gonna add or subtract, again, depending on if you're increase or decrease, 100% and the new percent. Now again, that can be an increase or a decrease, it really doesn't matter, they're both the same, you're just gonna know, need to know whether you're gonna add it or subtract it. And then, you multiply that percent times your original amount. So you're going to see a little bit different wording here. We're not just talking about what percent we want to, you know, what is 
the new price if $105 is increased by 15%. So do you see the difference there? We're not talking about what is the new amount. It'll sp specifically say you're looking for that new price. So we're looking for an increase or a decrease based on our original price. So first of all, our original price is 105 and we're going to increase it. So that means we're going to take 100% plus our new percent of 15%, which gives us a multiplier of 115%, right? And again, it's easier to add or subtract the percentages than it is to add or subtract all of those nickels and dimes, those dollars, dollar amounts. So times our $105, and somebody with a calculator, please, 115% times... One hundred five dollars. Anybody, sir? Sure. One hundred and twenty point seven five dollars. There you go. And so, if you do that addition first, you get the new price with the increase already in it. Now, the way the book describes it, they'll describe it two ways. The first way that you're going to find the amount and then add it to the uh, and then add it to your original amount. But in my opinion, it would be easier just to add the percentages. And beyond that, if you think of if you start thinking that way, then you'll start thinking of increase as above 100%, decrease as below 100%. Okay? All right. So we did one together. Let's look at, or I did one actually. So let's look at one for you to work with. So the last thing we want to look at is we want to look at what happens when we know the new price and we know our original amount, but I want to find out what percent discount or increase I, I took off, okay? So what we're looking for here is to find the percent of increase or decrease given the new price and the original price. So we're, this time we're looking for the, the number of percent instead of one of the prices. And to do that, I need to remember that part over whole fraction. The whole part is easy because we know that the whole amount is simply the original amount, right? That's what everything is based from, okay? What we need to do is think about the part of it. Now, what we're looking for is the amount of increase or decrease. So that's not a new price. We want how much did it go up or down, okay? And so what we'll do is we'll simply take the original minus the new price, which gives us the amount of increase or decrease over your original price. And doing that division is going to give you the decimal, which then you turn into a percent to make this work. Okay? So say, for example, sorry, of course my examples are going to be below, but yours are going to be off to the side, please. All right. Say, for example, the new price is $25 on something that originally cost $75. Yes, I'm purposely choosing easy numbers to work with. So now, to find out the percent of increase or decrease, in this case, decrease because it went down, right? The new price is much lower than the original. So I need to find out the, I need to take the original minus the new. So 75 minus 25, which is 50, and then divide it by the original price. So when you do that division, you're going to get a decimal. Let me see. Who am I going to? Jamie, could you tell me what that decimal is going to be? I don't even know where you go. There you are. Okay. So 50 divided by 75 is going to give you what is a decimal? 0 0.67, which we will then move the decimal over two places to the right because this time we're trying to create a percent. So that means move it to the right two places, which gives us 67%. 
So the amount we saved was 67%. Now you could do it without subtracting them, but if you just divided the new amount by the original amount, you're not getting out, you're not gonna get how much you saved, you're gonna get how much you paid. So then you would have to subtract the, the percentages. Let me just show you that really quickly on this same example. If I had taken the 25%, $25 divided by the $75, when you do that, you're gonna get about, oops, sorry, I can't write, 33%. To see how those two things are related, they add to make 100. So then you could take the 100 minus the 33, and that would give you the 67%. So it doesn't matter if you do the addition or subtraction with the percentages or the addition or subtraction with the numbers. Personally, I like to do the addition or subtraction with the percentages. Why? You bet. 100 minus 33 is a lot easier than all of those dollar amounts and cents amounts. So it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. The only time you could get in any trouble when you do this is if you make a rounding error, it can throw your percentage off a tiny bit, which simply wouldn't happen if you used the actual numbers. But if you're careful about your rounding, that won't really happen to you, right? And of course, if you just put it in your calculator and let your calculator do all the work, then it, it doesn't matter, okay? All right, so we're gonna stop there.